What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 135 of the Games and Grabs podcast. My name is Sonny G, and I'm here, as always, with Finn Steele. Hello. And Steve. Hello. And it's uh, an, another another week to add to the the what feels like never-ending tally of mm. the Games and Grabs podcast run of 2021. Yeah. We're doing it. We're doing it. Roll, we are on a serious roll. Finn, how you doing? I know you've been at work all day today. Mm, I'm tired. <laughs> Otherwise, I know you're working at working mornings, and I had about I've had like three hours sleep max. Nice. Uh, but yeah, so that was fun. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, I'm good. It's yeah, about cool. I went back, back to bed for like a few hours. But well, you know, hopefully after this, you know, you can get your head down and <laughs> yeah. uh, you know c- catch you up on sleep. You got to work tomorrow. Uh, yep, yeah, back in tomorrow, back at twelve. Um, the joys yeah. of retail, eh? Yep, yep. I had another cup of morning brown when I go home, or evening brown. Uh, that was good. <laughs> a cup of brown, you know, will always get you through. Yeah. You need to make like a t-shirt, like a brown t-shirt, which just says morning on it. Like yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, get, get the Game Some Graps logo on there. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Coming soon. Yeah. The t-shirt thing near you. Yeah, Game Some Graps merch is on its way, man. It really is. Yes, it is. Look out for it. We're going to yeah. make some money off this shit. It's about time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, for sure. Yeah. God damn it, we take two hours out of our Saturday weekly. We deserve to make money. Yeah, it's a busy, busy schedule. Two hours plus 12 hours of bloody wrestling every week. Well, yeah. that's true, yeah. Well. There's a, yeah, there, there is that, definitely, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, to be honest, I, if I'm being perfectly honest with you guys, I've barely watched any wrestling this week. I know I've caught up with it like via the uh, the medium of social media, uh, but I've barely watched anything. I've had no time. I've had such a busy week. And like Finn, I am extremely tired. And I'm, I feel like I'm basically running on fumes and brown at the minute. <laughs> fumes and brown. Brown fumes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah podcast, pretty much. Podcast title for the week, Fumes and Brown. Yeah. Fum- <laughs> fumes and brown. Or brown fumes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that could be the one. Yeah, yeah, that could it. be the one. That could be the one, but I'm sure you know there's still plenty of time for this podcast to deteriorate into shit and you know find another a title worthy of uh, this week's podcast. <laughs> I'd be I'd still be disappointed if it didn't. Yeah, <laughs> no, me too. Yeah, for sure. Is it what they're coming to expect from us? I Every think year. so. Yeah, I think the people that sort of do listen to this, you know, now. Expect nonsense. Expect their kids' ears to be filled with stuff that it definitely shouldn't be. You yes. know, uh, you know, at tender ages, and yeah, I'm just happy that we're putting you know smiles on faces. And I was, I was going to say filth in kids' ears, but um, mm-hmm. and that's probably a poor choice of words. <laughs> so poor. Yeah, it's very poor. We'll, uh, we'll <laughs> well, I don't know how else, I don't I don't know how else to word it. <laughs> I guess it's on some sort of list. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, you good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really good. I say twelve hours of wrestling. You fast forward quite a lot of it, and there's about oh 40, yeah, of course. 000, there's about forty thousand ad breaks as well. So it's like Monday yeah. night, it's three hours. If actually, it's probably two and a half hours with all mm. the ad breaks. But that aside, yes, ah. I am. I'm good. I'm, I'm feeling good. Um, we are another week, another week closer to the end of this uh, crap situation that we're in. So oh, yeah. yeah, all good, all good. Tick, ticking off the weeks as we go by. Yeah, good. absolutely. It was good to see you in human form earlier. Yeah. Uh, yes, socially from- distanced, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, drop some cake off at your uh, humble abode for the children. Cake. Yes. On cake. For the, for the, hey, if you didn't work for the, like a douchebag on a Saturday, <laughs> then I would drop cake off at your house too. <laughs> That's Come on, Finn. Surely you get free cake. You work in a shop. Come on. I do get heavily reduced cake, to be fair, when it goes out of date. Heavily reduced cake. Yeah. Not free <laughs> cake, but <laughs> heavily reduced cake. Yeah, that's the annoying thing about like... retail. Like, if, if no one buys it at the end of the day, it says it's given it to like, the staff or whatever, it's been it. It's like, they literally can't give it to us or like whatever legal box. So just throw it in the bin. It's like, what a waste. What a waste of cake. Yeah. Can't you not just then go like rummaging in the bin? <laughs> you could, yeah, I suppose you could. Like stick of the dump, fin of the dump. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I did actually buy like, a, like an entire, like, what's it like a little box of um, 
what was it bone bill dark chocolate cadbury dark chocolate for like nice. 10p each because <laughs> they're going to throw it away if i had to throw it away i'll not buy that i love it I'll did you quick. like buy your mum some like heavily reduced chocolate <laughs> and card for mother's day that, you, that is tomorrow <laughs> Uh, unfortunately not. That's still well and truly in date. Cards are still ex- like how much? How expensive are cards? A bit of cardboard. Well, it depends thought- where you go. I mean, if you, you know, there are card establishments out there. I'm not going to name them. <laughs> but you can get cards for like a pound. Yeah, but I can't be bothered to go places and do things. Oh, okay, right. So you <laughs> ordered it off the internet and paid an extortionate price for it. I know it's got from work. Oh, you just got it from work. Yeah, yeah. Right. Got work. Flowers, chocolate, chocolates. Sorted. I'll be cool, yeah. you there, Finn. I'm not going to be shopping around for a bloody card. I'll pick one up. I, I don't even look at the price. I, I, the, I'll just get to the All right, money back. No, 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 no. I mean, I get, I get, to, get to the <laughs> and it's like four pound for a card, and they go, "Oh God!" No, like, and then yeah. it's like, like, oh, it's too late to put it back. It's too embarrassing. So, here, enjoy your card that's going to be up for a week and then thrown in the bin. Yeah, a week. Hmm? I usually keep them up for a week. That's a bit of a bit of an unwritten rule in my house. They're up for a week and then they come down. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, All right. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> it's just one card from like last birthday to this birthday. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So before we start the podcast, as we always do, um, just a quick thank you to everybody who entered the uh, giveaway that we did on Twitter mm. for Retromania Wrestling, and yeah. congratulations to the winners. And also thank you to RetroSoft for providing us with the two steam codes to give away yes thanks very much yes. Thank uh, very thanks much. to all of our new followers and all of the people that keep subscribing to our youtube channel that's cool as well yeah. um it's great to see that our consistency is paying off to a degree um you know really. progress is slowly you know slowly but surely you know coming and you know things are starting to really take shape for us so uh thank you to everybody who is enjoying the stuff that we do at the minute uh, and yeah. Phil, it was cool to see you streaming last night actually on YouTube again. It's not it's been a been a little while. Yeah, it's fun. Um it's nice and easy to still like with your PS5, just you know, hit live, go straight to YouTube or whatever. Yeah. Um when I, when I was doing it before, I had to like get the camera set up, get my microphone set up mm-hmm. and do a lot of stuff. Uh, which still look good, still looks better than you know doing PS5, but it's such a faff. I kind of got, you know, uh burnt out on it. It's like I don't want to have to set this up every time. No, um, that's fair, you know, and I, I think, you know, sometimes it can be a real faff to do it, and you know, I think yeah. sometimes, you know, it does make it, you know, unenjoyable to a degree. Yeah, yeah, but just sitting straight from the sofa with my new headset, and it's like, great, I'll start to do this more, so yeah, I'll definitely be doing more streams like that in the future. Um, oh. It would be did nice you, to get... Like, did, you go for the, did you go for the um, the adapter for the uh, the PlayStation camera? Uh, no, I didn't use the camera um, for it. Because uh, yeah, I I have the camera the camera adapter, but that would mean I have to unplug my PS4. I don't use my PS4 with VR because I'm not using my okay. PS5 with VR because that means faffing about with cables and I just can't be bothered. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so, that is totally fair. The PlayStation <laughs> VR is an obscene amount of cables. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I might get a PS5 camera at some point. That's fair. Yeah, no, I, I was tempted to buy one, but I don't stream anywhere near enough. Yeah, to really well, warrant it, and probably yeah. won't bother until PlayStation VR two if I bother with PlayStation VR two. But yeah, okay. yeah, right. What are we playing this week? Finn Steele, let's start with you. Hello. Uh, I'm playing quite a lot this week, actually. Um, mm. so I, I need to get a round of applause ready because I've platinumed, uh, not platinumed, but I've finished uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps on Xbox yeah, last PC. Excellent. Hell of a game. Hell of a hell of a game. Congratulations uh, on finishing the game. Thank you. If I'd finished it like last year, I would have been on my top 10 games of the year for sure. Yeah. Um, just the way, you know, it feels to play, like the platforming and just running through the levels, like as you unlock it, more abilities, you just like blasting through it, jumping and flips and mm. grappling and things. It feels so good to just play, just to control. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it's, it's a great really game. Good. Hell of a game. Looks beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah. stunning. Totally stunning. 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely recommend it to anyone. Um, yeah, 10 out of 10, for sure. Um, I've also finished um, uh, Paper Mario and the Origami King on Switch. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh. That guy's uh, so excited ooh. every time. Yeah, every time. Uh, yeah, finally got around to finishing that. It has been a nice, delightful, happy game. Good. Good times. Um, <laughs> what else? Also, I was looking through Game Pass and I've downloaded Street of Rage 4. Nice, is, okay. 
It's really, really fun. Just classic. You know, I heard a lot of people talking, you know, highly of it. I thought, oh, yeah. it's Game Pass, I'll give it a go. Why not? And yeah, it's so fun. If yeah, like, I mean, it's, it's everything you want from it. It's everything you yeah. expect from it as well. Absolutely. So, so good. Um, and I think that's about it, really. Oh, I downloaded um, Desert Tester out Doom Eternal from Game Pass. Oh, uh, yeah. Mainly because I just wanted to see if it would run on my PC, which it does, actually. It's fucking well. Um, and yeah, just failure the first level. It was like, this is so cool. <laughs> Running around Man, shooting enemies. It's fucking badass. Yeah, like heavy metal music in the background. Yeah, so, it's... <laughs> it's it's nuts. I mean, that Doom Eternal is a fucking nuts game. It's, it's so good. good. It's so fast. It's like ridiculously yeah. frantic, and it's brutal. It's yeah. so good. So Absolutely. so good. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, and yeah, that's about it, really, game wise. Um, how about you, Steve? Uh, not a huge amount of gaming from me this week. Super super busy. Um, dipped into FIFA for a couple of hours uh, last weekend, uh, trying to progress through my career mode trying to get that finished um and then today just playing a bit of animal crossing there on the mm. switch so just nice chilled out you know something's on in the background just get the switch out nice and easy lovely stuff yeah. so yeah not not a huge amount of, of gaming from me unfortunately but um yeah enjoyable none the least that's awesome. fair enough good stuff yeah, that yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, um, me, I've, I've been pretty much gaming on my Switch again this week. Nice. Um, round of applause for me. I actually finished the story for um, Super Mario 3D World. Yay! Good stuff. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Loved it. Um, I'm going through the bonus levels now, like the stuff that unlocks sort of after the story uh, finishes. Like, uh, I think the, the world that I'm doing at the minute is sort of based on Super Mario Galaxy. Oh, awesome. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to carry on and, you know, finish the bonus stuff. And then I'm going to do um, Bowser's Fury as well that comes, oh, yeah. you know, is packaged with Mario 3D World. Yeah. Um, another round of applause. I finally <laughs> finished uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well applause for Dude, for real, I was stuck in a fucking cave for ages and it was just doing my head in and I just couldn't. I, I just lost patience with it. Totally, <laughs> totally lost my patience with it. But this week, I, I charged my Pokeball and I sat there and uh, I, I'd be—I can't remember—it was one one day earlier this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, one day anyway. Yeah. Um, and I beat it, and yeah, that's the first Pokemon game that I beat alongside uh -huh. the first Mario game that I've ever beat. Wow. And I feel like I've progressed in the world. Yeah, you finally did it. Well done. Uh, so I you did. Be the originals back in the day. No, no. I don't think I did. Well, I think I was too young to really get very far. But yeah, I think I was just, but you know, too much of a young idiot when like the original <laughs> Pokemon games were out. I was like, oh, this is cool. The, the cartoon's great. And then, <laughs> but you know, I was just too much of a, a fucking moron to uh, to actually play and beat the game. But yeah, I, I loved it. I loved it so much. I thought it was great. And you know, I'm really excited for the ones that are coming out this year. I love the like the style that they're they're in. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna play one of them. I'm not sure which yet. Um, well, but yeah, um, that was that was cool. Played more Wrestling Empire, as um, I'm sure you saw on my Twitter, because I posted a video oh, yeah. last night because they've just put exploding barbed wire ropes in. <laughs> um, and last night, so I, the video that I posted, you can go and check it out on my Twitter. Um, and it was so basically, I had Kevin Owens, who was who's Calvin Steen, Calvin Steam, sorry, on it, <laughs> uh, and against Jeff Hardy because I've changed his name. I whipped Jeff Hardy into the ropes. The ropes blew up. Picked him up hit my finisher, which is the stunner. One, two, three, stood up to do my victory pose. Ropes blew up, fell over the ropes. <laughs> and it, it was just... <laughs> and to me, that it just sums Wrestling Empire up in one video. Like, just, <laughs> just how ridiculously stupid it is. The ref, yeah. I think he's got like a title belt in his hand while he's counting oh, yeah. the three count. Yeah. I just... He, he, I, I laugh every time I play it because of how absurd the game is. <laughs> There's just always something ridiculous going on. Like... There's always someone wandering about a ringside with a weapon in the hand or the ref's got a weapon or there's, there's always something stupid going on. And the fact that they've added barbed wire exploding you know, ropes in uh, just makes me so happy. And it, was, it's, it, it, it just gets better with every update. And I tried the six-sided ring out as well, which is really cool. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, and I've also I've been playing a bit of Retromania on um, on my laptop as well uh, because oh. it's still not out on consoles. Um, 
I spoke with Mike from Retrosoft and he sort of said that, you know, he was probably looking at next week. Uh, so that would be this coming week, you know, because we're recording yeah. on Saturday right now. And, you know, hopefully, you know, there's a lot of people giving them crap on social media, which I think is unwarranted. Yeah. Um, you know, people need to bear in mind that these guys have never released a game before. So, you know, you know Steam will have anything. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Right. But, I, you know, I've played it and, you know, because the game was made on a PC, obviously. So they're obviously having some teething issues with, you know, getting it to consoles because let's be fair, every console is different. One of the problems they were having that Mike, you know, said in his developer's vlog, it was a problem with the Joy-Con. You turn it on its side and, you know, the pause button didn't work. <laughs> Just stupid shit like that, you know. Yeah. So they have to resubmit it for uh, certification and, you know, you have to go through the ringer with it. And it will come out. It's just about being patient. You know, people need to stop giving them so much shit on the internet and inventing these conspiracy theories that it's never coming out and they've, they've stolen money from people. It's just fucking stupid. That, that's people being being people on the internet these days. And yeah. uh, it's shitty and just don't do it. Yeah, don't be a dick. Yeah, it's coming. It's, um, it's great and you'll enjoy it. It, it sure. goes back to the thing that we've, we've always said. You guys have always said it. And, you know, I, I totally agree with you. Why rush something out when it's not, you know, spot on? Do you, see, you know what I mean? Well, that's it. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine yeah. them releasing the Switch version, two players playing with the Joy-Con and the pause button not working? Yeah, yeah. People would moan like it'd shit. Be, it'd be yeah. ridiculous, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, this is the first time thing, you know, lessons learned and all that kind of stuff. Oh, um, you. But, you know, to, to accuse them of being misleading and stealing and all that sort of stuff, you know, I've had conversations with mike and he's a real stand-up guy you know they've put yeah. their heart and soul into this project and you know this is a love letter to you know WrestleFest from the arcades back in the 90s and this is the first game they've ever brought out they brought it out as a labor of love you know so it's coming you know certification isn't yeah. easy yeah yeah and you know the fact they've had to you know they do it and then they resubmit it yeah it's, it's coming and hopefully it'll be next week yeah Fingers crossed. But if it's not, just fucking wait longer. <laughs> yeah, just play yeah. something else. Everyone's got a million of games. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Ever, you've got Game Pass. Just fucking do that. Or <laughs> PlayStation Now or whatever you're playing on. There's a million free games on Switch if you're dying to play it on Switch. Go yeah. and buy, I don't know, Restaurant Tycoon or whatever the shit that they <laughs> shovel out, you know, on the Switch. <laughs> like Taco, t Taco Van Tycoon or something like that's like available on it. It's 79p. Go and spend 79p and play that and shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Right, Finn. Um, so you, you mentioned right. before um, coming on that you had some actual gaming news this week. Now, yeah, so it was addressed. Oh, wait, one second. Before we do move on to gaming news, um, mm -hmm. round of applause for Squinny, who listens to this podcast, regular podcast oh. listener. He's just got his first platinum trophy in the form of uh, Astro Bot on the PlayStation 5. So, uh, round of applause for Squinny. Congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome. Platinum Club. Welcome. Yeah. Oh, you know, the, the amount that you game or the amount that Squinny games, you know, I was amazed to learn that this is his first platinum. Yeah, I mean, not everyone's into like 100% in games, playing them, no. you know, as much as possible, which is absolutely understandable. That I must be that. quite blissful, to be honest. Yeah, just not like, giving a care, just play through the game, I'm done, cool, I've had fun. Yeah, imagine that, somebody could just play through Crash Bandicoot, like, not have his hair fall out. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can't, my brain wouldn't let me, so you can 100% it, you can do it, it's sitting there 50%, what are you doing? Oh. I must beat it. Uh, <laughs> I played it, died about 30 times last night, and <laughs> deleted it again. I don't blame you. But it yeah, looks the, great in you know 4K 60 FPS and all that sort of stuff. But amazing. no, I'm not playing it. Nope. <laughs> Don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was streaming last night. Um, but yeah, did game did that just screw me over one more time? I turn it on to get water the trophies. Most of them popped. And I was looking at the screen, waiting for the button to pop, and nothing happened. I was like, wait. And I checked the trophy list, and there's a few trophies that just didn't pop, whatever, whatever reason. Uh, yeah, a, a trophy popped with no actual color trophy, and it just said "fuck you, Finn." <laughs> yeah, really much in the middle. <laughs> you piece of shit. You think yeah. you're gonna cheat this game? Get it on and play it again now. Yeah, uh, one of them originally was the one for um, beating every level without dying, getting every box. I was like, oh god, screw that. But thankfully, I beat one level and it unlocked. I was like, oh my god, thank Christ. 
And the rest were super easy and just like playing multiplayer levels and doing certain tasks in certain levels. So have you um, got the platinum again? Oh, yes. I have it again now. Thank goodness. Congratulations. Give yourself Thanks. a round of applause and you deserve it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I streamed that. I streamed the last few trophies I need to get, and yeah, thankfully it was nice and simple. And now it's uninstalled, and we'll go straight to bin. Excellent, yeah. <laughs> we'll never be seen again. Did you have to like yeah. polish off the disc? Because like you know, when you finished it on PS4, you like threw it across the room. Yeah, thankfully it landed you know, shiny side up, so it was okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> was right. You mentioned there. Um, sorry, just you mentioned there about uh, you know, jokingly, obviously it popped up a trophy, no color, and said a new thing. I'm pretty sure back in the day when I had a 360 that I got a zero gamer score achievement. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to wreck my brains as to what the game would be now. But yeah, yeah, there's a couple, a, I think, that's that's that do have the uh, balls, zero gamer score. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, think it's, it's, like, I guess it's if you're like really crap at the game, isn't it? And you do something that you probably shouldn't do. And you're like, hey, you're crap. Here, have a zero gamer score. Okay. Yeah, I think there's one game I played. It was like if you die a certain amount of times in a level. It's yeah, like, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks. That's a good moment on my game card forever. Cheers. So, yeah. um, Gears of War may as well have like no gamer score achievements because they like they give you ones for like f uh, like five G. It's like fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I, great. I just, <laughs> I just died a hundred times trying to kill these kill these bad guys, and because now I finished the chapter, which has taken me three years. You give me a 5G achievement. Tell you what, <laughs> take your 5G achievement. Shove it up your ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, All right, Finn. So you hello. promised us some gaming news because we've not had any gaming news for a couple of weeks because, quite frankly, we don't look. So yeah, you know, yeah, we, yeah. We, we sit here and we go, um, yeah, there's no gaming news this week, but actually we've not looked. Yeah, I was blasted against spot. Uh, yeah, can't see anything. Okay, moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think the biggest news this week is all the Bethesda games coming to Xbox Game Pass, which is pretty huge. There was a lot. Um, but there's a, a lot. lot of Skyrim going on right now. You just know it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the full list there is uh, we've got Dishonored, Definitive Edition, Dishonored 2, uh, Doom Classic, Doom 3, Doom 2, Doom 64, um, Doom Eternal, uh, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, Fallout 76 for some reason, uh, Prey, Rage 2, Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls Online, Evil, Evil Within, Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein New Order, Wolfenstein Old Blood, and Wolfenstein Young Blood. Ugh, a lot of games. Holy shit. Yeah, <laughs> go go and play the Evil Within. If you haven't, it's weird. Yes. It's so weird, but it's so good. Oh, like, even if you just pass <laughs> through it uneasy like I did, because you know it is a tough game, but it's it's really good. Like Maybe. I can't begin to stress how good it is. Agreed, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's just, it's twisted, it's strange, it just takes turns that you don't expect it to, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's really superb. That's actually my pick out of all of them games. Doom Eternal is is fantastic, Skyrim is Skyrim, but uh, definitely go and play The Evil Within. I think it's the, the you know, the unsung hero of that collection there. Yeah, absolutely, I agree with that, for sure. Uh, not only that, but something get, yeah. Uh, but something get like an added performance boost on Xbox Series X. Mm -hmm. So like they're given 60 frames a second uh, upgrades to Dishonored Definitive Edition, uh, Prey, uh, Skyrim, Fallout 4, and Fallout 76. Bonus. Did you ever play Prey, like the re the remake of it? No, I didn't want to play it. I have the well, I had it. <laughs> it's on myself as usual. I played the demo. I was like, whoa, this is awesome. I need to get this. I just never around it. More than just one yeah. to slip to the cracks. Yeah, I was the same. I played the demo. I was like, okay, this is really cool, and then never played it. Yeah, I like the concept that like mm. the enemies could be hiding in like any objects, like they camouflage as like a cup on the desk. Yeah, walking past it, it's saying he jumps out of you. I like yeah. that a lot. So I have to play cool. for sure. Yes, Steve, if you, if you like Resident Evil and stuff, The Evil Within is 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 that sort of game. It's um, cool. very similar. I think it's mm. there's somebody. I'm I, now Finn. You can quote me, tell me if I'm wrong here, but I'm sure that somebody involved in Resident Evil had a part in The Evil Within. Like yeah, in terms so, of making it, exactly. Yeah, that's the director or something. I'll look it up. Yeah, but it's it's that it's that basically that it's a survival horror game. Just it's a bit more twisted than and fucked up than Resident Evil. But it's really good, like so good. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah Shinji Mikami. Yes, that's it. Yeah. The designer, director, producer. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Cool stuff. Um, the other big bit of news that uh, came out this week was Epic Games buying um, Fall Guys creator Mediatronic. It's a good get for them. Yeah, that wasn't that um, 
that was that was noted, wasn't it? Like, uh, well, it was touted a little while ago that that was happening. Yeah, I think uh, it was. That's yeah. officially happened. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, yeah, obviously, Fall Guys one of the biggest um, mm. sort of battle royale ish games right now. Um, so doing that, and they also own, um, of course, uh, Fortnite. So they own yeah. all. The, all if anybody the, knows uh, battle royale, it's epic. So <laughs> yeah, it's add money. This is nothing but great news for Fall Guys, though. Yeah, you know, because obviously it's yeah. coming to uh, Switch and Xbox uh, in a couple of months' time. So, um, you know, if that, now Epic are behind it and you know behind that team, so uh, you know the, the the sky's the limit for an already great game. Yeah, awesome. Yep. Good stuff. Um, that's the biggest stuff this week. Um, yeah, got the Xbox stuff. I think that's about it. Ready? All the big stuff. There we go. So now, if you listen to this podcast, you can never moan that we don't give you gaming news because there it is. <laughs> yeah, and Apex Legends came on Switch, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's supposed to be shit though. Like it's supposed to <laughs> run like absolute ass. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's probably, like yeah, thirty uh, FPS. It's like seven twenty p docked, five forty not docked. It's supposed to run at thirty, but apparently doesn't. So. Uh, hey, I'm sure they'll fix it, but I'm not taking the pun to 18 gigs worth of download for it to be shit. So, <laughs> so I have to download. Uh, speaking of, Crash Five is Crash Five. Crash Four is like half the size uh, on PS5 than it's on PS4 for some reason. Yeah, it's 22 oh, gig on Xbox Series X. Yeah, so how they've done that? But hey, short, short I don't know how is. they've done it. I really don't know how they've done it for the, like this gen because that that was the big worry when they announced the Xbox Series S and the amount of storage that it was going to have. But then, you know, Destiny, you know, is a, like a hundred and something gig game, but on, it's not on Xbox Series S. It's a lot smaller yeah. than that. Uh, Forza yeah. is usually a hundred gig, but I th- I'm certain it's n- not that on the Series S. Steve, you'll be able to tell me that, actually. No, it's not that at all. No yeah, they've, yeah. Com- they've so, managed to compress a lot of stuff. I guess it's better optimized and stuff. Yeah. Um, Call of Duty needs to figure out how they've done it. It's only three yeah. gigabytes by space to play it. But did so. you see that thing the other week where they said that, um, like Call of Duty wouldn't fit soon oh, yeah. on a on a base five hundred gig PS five? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's insane. I mean, that <laughs> is ridiculous. Come on, yeah, so this, this yeah. is no, no reason it needs to be that big. Figure no, it out. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, yeah, seriously, figure it out. <laughs> you know, it should not be. You know, games don't need to be that big. They just don't. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> no. God damn it, man! Uh, good times, great times. Yeah. <laughs> also, who wants to download like millions of updates for a game? It's like, oh, get in! There's a new Call of Duty update. Like, you want to play with your friends, but they've got shit internet, and it's like, yeah, it's going to take me until you know two weeks next Thursday to for it to download because my internet <laughs> sucks so bad, and the updates, yeah. you know, 178 gig or whatever. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, speaking of stupid stuff. Um, mm. crash, crash Ball, hello, once again. Um, it's never going away. It's never going away. Um, so I downloaded it on PS5, obviously. Obviously, my save data from the PS4 version is on my PS5. So I thought, mm. oh, I'll just turn it on, grab the PS5 or save file, boom, sorted. Uh, but nope, you need to upload it from the PS4 version to the internet, to the cloud, and download it back <laughs> onto the PS5 version. And it's like, why? It's on my PS5. Why don't we to upload it, download it again? <laughs> like, PS4, the PS4 to PS5, sure, that makes sense. But it's on my PS5 already. I need to install the PS4 version from disk and then download the PS5 version, have them both there and jump between them. It's like, come on, really? Yeah, that, that's stupid. I mean, come on. That's so stupid. So right stupid. There. Come on. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's already there. Just just take it from there. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> that's one more stupid funny thing from Crash. Anyway, I'm moving on now. Do you think finally, like now you've got the platinum again for Crash? Do you think do you think you'll be able to let it lie now? I think so. I think it's finally over until Crash Five comes out. But for now, it's. Oh, I think yeah. you're, you're ages away from that. So I think you, yeah. you you're good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna relax for now. Okay. <laughs> well, gentlemen. Hello. Are you ready? Yes. Do you I have pen so. and paper? All right. Pens confirmed for those you know watching the audio, listening to the audio version of this. <laughs> Finn currently leads by four wins to two. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the games and graps. Eliminator. I think a sound effect for it. Yeah. 
Let me sound effects. There you go. Question number one. Yay. We've got the music at least. In Tom Clancy's The Division, on what day of the year is a virus spread throughout New York through infected banknotes? Oh. Is it A, Thanksgiving, B, Black Friday, C, Christmas Day, D, Easter? It's definitely one of those. Correct. Yes, it is. <laughs> I can confirm it is definitely one of those. <laughs> uh Pens down, please. Finn Steele, we'll start with your answer. Um, I went for Black Friday. Okay. Steve? I, too, went for Black Friday. Do you turn on? Wait. <laughs> Moment. <laughs> yeah, right, right in lists. Right in lists. <laughs> uh, I can confirm that the correct answer was Black Friday. Congratulations, hey. I think it was either that or Christmas. I know it's like winter. At it's the time. set at Christmas, yeah. It, it, yeah. You know, it's got the Christmas stuff there because obviously Black Friday is around uh, that time of year, like the back end of the year. Yeah, it's the day yeah, after yeah. Thanksgiving, is yeah. it? It makes sense. It you know, cash is going to be changing hands. Are you going to do it of on course. that day? It's good point. Great game as well, by the way. The first one is so good. Jesus. Yeah. The second great. one's great on Xbox Series uh, X, actually. I, it's better than it is on the PS5. I've played both versions, and the Xbox right. one's definitely better. Oh, weird. Nice. Question number two is an open-ended question. Ooh. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Which five colors are used on the fret buttons of Guitar Hero? I mean, I Don't look, look <laughs> if you've got one. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to read the fun literature right over there. Yeah, fuck you, Finn. Don't look. Jesus. I'm not, I'm not looking at <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, I can see him. He's looking straight down at his paper. I'm going to keep not, an eye on him yeah, until yeah. I say pens down. I can't remember the last one. Oh. I think it's this. It's actually rock pen controllers. It could be different. Pens down. The rock band controller is the same. Oh, is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Finn, we'll start with you. Um, it doesn't I'm... have to be in order. It doesn't have to be in order. Okay. I don't think it is. <laughs> I've gone for green, red, blue, yellow, and orange. Okay. I went for the same, but in a different order. Okay. Yellow, orange, blue, green, red. All right. Well, you are both correct. Yeah. Did you have my sent over there? Great game. I was absolutely panicking because I was trying to think I couldn't. Red just wasn't coming to me at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, for me, it was always. Ah, like, think of a color. <laughs> <laughs> right. Question number three. No lives lost as of yet. Yeah. Now, listen to this question carefully, all right? Because, okay. Who was the first WWE superstar to win the WWE Championship at a Royal Rumble event? Was it A, Hulk Hogan, B, Ric Flair, C, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, or D, Sergeant Slaughter? Pens down, please. Not how you spell that. Okay, Finn. Um, stab in the dark. I'm in for Sergeant Slaughter. Okay, Steve. Slaughter. Slick Rick. Rick Flair. The answer was. Sergeant Slaughter. So hell of a guess that is, Finn. Oh, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Must like last week. I'm getting lucky. <laughs> Steve, um, you are a life down. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, Steve. Next question. <laughs> Which entry into the FIFA series was the first to include playable women's teams? Was it 14, 15, 16, or 17? Uh, 
All right, pens down. Finn? Um, let's say guess again. Obviously, people. Uh, 16. Okay. Steve? We're either going to be both right or both wrong because I've gone for 16 as well. And it was a guess. Yeah, it is. It is 16. Congratulations, wow. Murph. Mm. Finn, hell of a guess. <laughs> yep, again. Fuck's sake. <laughs> it's gonna make me run out of questions. I thought I was gonna be uh I thought I was gonna be well away here with this. <laughs> okay. Next question. Who currently holds the record for competing in the most WrestleMania matches in one night? Was it A the Ultimate Warrior? B, the Macho Man Randy Savage. C, Brett the Hitman Hart. Or D, Hulk Hogan. Pens down. No shit, I'm... Pens down! No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Finn. I went for Hulk Hogan or Double H. Double H? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Steve? So coming for him, Hulk Hogan. Oh wow! The answer is the Macho Man Randy Savage. You oh, both I was, lose I was life. Go for him. I was going to go for the Macho Man. <laughs> oh yeah! All right. So Finn, you've lost one life. Steve, you have lost two. Okay. Oh yeah, I watched that insane. Like massive cage, I can't remember what they call it like cage match from WCW. Um, oh, the three stages, the, 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 the triple cage, yeah, yeah. What the hell was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the alliance of end Hulkamania, Hulkamania, aka everyone we have available for that night, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And Master Man forgets to pin at the end of the match, it runs back in, <laughs> and Lex Luger punches Big Flair in the face entirely on purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's fucking nuts. It's honestly, it's crazy. Canyon gets thrown off. It's nuts. Yeah, uh, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Next question. This is an open-ended question. Harvested from sea slugs, which genetic altering substance serves as the catalyst for civil war in the 2007 game Bioshock? Oh. What's your question again for the first part? Really? All you want me to read all them words again? <laughs> this okay. is the first part. Slug Harvested thing? from sea slugs, which genetic altering substance serves uh, as the catalyst for the civil war in the 2007 game Bioshock? Uh, I don't remember what it's called. You can have a little bit longer to rack your brains here. Do you, would you like a clue? It's, yes. Yeah. It's a male's first name. Oh, right. So, what you send the little sisters to farm? You're gonna have to rush you, Steve. Go on. Done. Okay, Finn. Um, I've gone for Adam. Oh. Okay. I can't, don't, I even bother ask, don't, don't even bother asking me. I know that Finn's right. Finn is right. It, it, it is Adam. That is a that is a tough one. I think uh, you know if I'd have given if it had given you four choices, you'd have both got it. Yeah, I would. Yeah. yeah. But that would have been too I'll easy. Put, I think. I put uh, I put Ryan. Yeah, uh, that, well, yeah. Andrew Ryan is one of the characters in the game. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I put I, I put Andrew, then I put Ryan, both wrong, and Andrew Ryan because yeah, I was thinking of that. Yeah. Yeah. That of was course. a thought process, but I was. This right. is my guess. God damn! What a game, though. How do we game? Oh, superb! Love it. Would you yeah. find me? Yeah, this podcast yeah. on Twitter. Thanks. Would you come? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next question. Uh, Steve, you lost a life there. Sorry, you have to uh, play the life noise. Oh, yeah. Finn, you have... Sorry, Steve, you have two lives left. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Who challenged Hulk Hogan for the WWE Championship on the first Saturday night's main event? 
Was it A, The Ultimate Warrior, B, Cowboy Bob Orton, C, Harley Race, or D, Andre the Giant? Pens down. Finn, what have you got? Uh, well, before you gave the choices, for some reason I had Ultimate Warrior in my head. But okay. it is, I guess, yeah. Same, I went Ultimate Warrior. Wow. The answer was Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. Um, wow. Oh. <laughs> Wrestling questions is tough this week. Yeah. Yes. I'm down to one life. No. Okay. Next question. Steve, you have one life left. Finn, you have three. How much money was on the line for the Andre the Giant versus Big John Studd body slam challenge at WrestleMania 1? <laughs> was it $5,000, $10,000, $15,000? Or twenty thousand dollars. I'm sure you've both watched WrestleMania one recently, so uh, I expect this answer to be correct. Pens sure. down, Finn. What have you got? I am for ten thousand dollars. Okay, Steve. What did you go for? I watched WrestleMania one about two years ago, but I, I something. In my brain says that it was a random amount, so I went for fifteen thousand. So I thought that's a bit of a weird amount. I'm probably going to be wrong. Mm, okay. Well, the answer is indeed fifteen thousand uh... dollars. Some, something <laughs> I, just, I, I remember watching it at the time and thinking that's a weird amount. Why wouldn't you round it up yeah. to like ten or twenty-five? Yeah. Yeah. So when you said 15, I was like, I think I'm definitely. Uh, yeah, cool. Not sure. Finn, you've lost a life. Play the noise, please. Thank you very much. Finn, you have two lives left. Steve, you have one life left. Oh, two dogs? Okay. You're right. I'm going count. Am I right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. right. You're right. <laughs> mm. Okay. Right. Okay. Next question. In Life is Strange, protagonist Max Caulfield is a student of which subject at Blackwell Academy? Is it A, cinematography, B, photography, C, biology, or D, radiology? What a game, by the way. Pens down. Finn Steele, what have you got? Look at this photograph. We'll put him in fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, just you want to look on your face. Well, well I, I, I started to put photograph for photography and I put then changed it to radiology and I'm guessing Finn is right based on his I, confident I, answer. I have no confidence at all. It's a big guess. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, the answer is photography. Oh, <laughs> no. Congratulations, Finn. Um, <laughs> you. you are the winner of this week's Eliminator. Yay. 5 2 is the score now. Wow. Pretty much all over. Yeah, it's not all over yet. I don't think it's all over yet. Good effort this week, though. Yeah. Speaking of Life is, life is Strange, but there's a bit of news. They've announced a new one coming soon. Well, coming at some point. They have, yeah. The thing is, I don't think they'll, it'll, anything will ever be as good as the first one. No, I agree. I don't know if this is going to be. Chapter based, like the last two, or it's going to be one big game. It's only just been like announced, it's only actually given any details yet. Mm. It's coming, it is coming, it is coming. So, 5 2, the eliminator stands out. I think we've got three more weeks. Uh, when's WrestleMania? Maybe maybe four, I don't know. Four, Four, I think, yeah. Mm. Basically, if Finn wins next week, Finn wins the uh, Finn wins the the series. Yeah, then I become the quiz master. Mm-hmm. And you become the quiz master. Yep. No, that's wrong, isn't it? No, the winner becomes quiz master, and then no, loser you... becomes quiz master, doesn't they? I can't remember. <laughs> loser becomes the quiz master, 
and takes on the winner, the reigning champion. Right. I thought like the, the winner does it, then the, the other two fight it out to, to fight the champion. I don't know. That's that, <laughs> that's the um, that's the grand final, isn't it? Sure. Yes. <laughs> I can't remember what we said. Yeah, we'll go with that. We, we we're just making it as we go along. Yeah. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, but... yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So, for example, if you were to win next week, Finn, when we start this again, it would be me versus you, and Steve would be asking the questions. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's what we said. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. Winner stays on, basically. Yeah, winner, yeah. yeah, exactly. Winner stays on. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Full show. Right. I love the Eliminator, by the way. It's like it's easily one of my favorite features of this podcast now. <laughs> yeah, same here. I love it. I'm so happy do, that we added it in. Despite losing, I do enjoy it. Yeah. It's good. To be fair, I am throwing questions, you know, at you gaming wise that, you know, are actually, and the wrestling ones were ridiculous this week. I, I made them difficult on purpose. Yeah. But no, it's good. I, I like the hard ones. I like it hard. Yeah. <laughs> Surely we've got a sound sound bite for that. Uh, like it hard. Um, try and figure it out. Hold on. Um, I'm sure oh, it's so <laughs> big and thick, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that Jericho? No, it's um, it's Don Callis um, on commentary <laughs> in in Impact. Yeah, Impact thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, this week in wrestling. <sighs> To be honest, it really leaves a lot to be desired. It wasn't great, but we're going to try and get through the wrestling highs and lows this week. Yeah. Let's do Steve? this. So I'm going to start off with a bit of wrestling news, just a couple of little uh, bits that I wanted to talk about. So okay. uh, Mo- Molly Holly is the first inductee to the 2021 WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, Very much excellent. deserved. Uh, she was told via video call by uh hurricane helms which i thought was really cool really sweet um yeah. both both getting quite emotional so yeah I'm, I'm, and she is a well-liked person you know backstage and all of that so well deserved yeah. and uh, it'd be interesting to see who else joins her for the 2021 hall of fame in the a, yeah absolutely let's have a round of applause for molly holly yeah well she's definitely one of the highlights of the women's division back then during the time of yes, where wrestling yeah. wasn't really taken seriously. She was definitely up there, you know, with the best thing. You know, women can wrestle, you know, good matches. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. yeah, women aren't just sort of tits and ass and <laughs> exactly ass, which is exactly what WWE portrayed them to be. Not not just WWE, you know, a lot of other popular yeah. promotions were guilty of it as well. You know, ECW, you know, the way they promoted. Um, you know, the Francine and Dawn Marie weren't exactly wearing a lot of clothes every week, and you know, they were you know having the cat fights and all that sort of stuff. And WCW had Stacey Keebler doing the uh, you know, the dancing on the announce table and stuff like that when she was I can't remember her name, Miss Hancock, I think her name was great That's name, like, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah so yeah. Molly Holly was definitely you know, a, yeah, a different type of uh, women's wrestler in a time when women, women's wrestling wasn't uh as revered as it is now. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of the uh, female wrestlers now actually uh, bring up Molly Holly as, a, as an inspiration. Yeah. You know, yeah. Outside, of, outside of Lita and, and probably Trish, next is probably then Molly Holly. So, you know, fair play. Um, yeah. Before you move and, on, before, before, yeah, you, on. before you do your next bit of news, <laughs> um, and this, you know, it's, it's almost on topic, to be fair. Um, so I was scrolling through Twitter this morning um, you know, looking at the, looking at the SmackDown results when I woke up, and you know, you you scroll down the wrestling tweets and you come across an account that you know its name is quite simply WWE Boobs. No, <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it was just called WWE Boobs, and it, it really made me laugh. And the the and this again, <laughs> the the caption. For the tweet was Bailey should. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> Bailey should show off her huge. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> compose yourself, Sonny. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey should show off her huge melons more often. <laughs> Eye emoji, heart emoji, fire emoji. (laughs) (laughs) I screenshotted it and sent it to Steve straight away. I was like, look at this. (laughs) I mean, I see see you found my Twitter account. Yeah. I I, I enjoyed the simplicity of the name of the account, just simply WWE boobs. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know what you're going to get. You you know what you're going to get from this account. You know, it's not going to be any, you know, good wrestling news or backstage gossip or five-star reviews of anything other than, well, WWE boobs. Yeah. Boobs. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's what you get when you look, when when you're looking through your phone on a Saturday morning for, uh, for SmackDown results. Yeah. How's your worst, Steve? Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> the only other thing I was going to mention is it's been reported this week that um, WrestleMania plans are pretty much back to square one, according to uh, backstage sources, which um, I, I does, doesn't overly surprise me, but apparently that even by Vince McMahon standards to not have the card 75, 80, 90% um complete even four weeks out and with a pay-per-view in between is unheard of and i think it shows in the weekly tv at the moment i think it really does show obviously we're going to get well i say obviously who knows reigns versus edge who knows whether that's going to be any different with uh, with the sort of the build we're getting at the minute Mm. bianca belair versus sasha is just a bit of a shit show at the minute as well yeah and it should be so easy as well come on it should be so easy yeah but yeah, I just thought that was just, I'd, I'd, I'd throw that out there because I think it just adds to the kind of the narrative, or if it is narrative, it could well be true, um, that it's just chaos backstage. Mm. Yes, so. a lot of rumours, you know, flying around that it's not, you know, all that positive backstage at the minute. Yeah, apparently yeah. Andrade asked for his release on Monday, the Raw tapings. Yes, yeah, yes I, I saw that tonight. as well, yeah. Yeah. thing Very is, right, you've got these, you know, we mention the same wrestlers every week, you know, Alistair Black. You know the, the you know the plan is well you know the, the 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 word is that you know he's not going to be used again you know before his contract expires. Mm. Yeah. So well, what the fuck? Are you, what what are you doing? Yeah. Why are you wasting the talent that you've got here? I just don't get it. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's so good. Why? Why why yeah. sign these top wrestlers knowing exactly what they are? They come as, you know, and then promoting them from NXT where you, you've seen what they're all about, you've seen what gimmick they bring to the table, and you know, you know, what, what they can do, what they're all about, but then you know, you bring them up and find nothing for them. Yeah. Mental. You know, Andrade was having these ridiculous matches with Rey Mysterio, tearing the house down week after week. Yeah. As soon as that stopped, it almost like ideas ran out. Oh shit! We haven't got another Mexican guy to make him do Mexican stuff with, or something. <laughs> That's probably what I it was. Least, well, you know. I think as well, a lot of it, it it comes across as just pettiness as well. Some of it. So, like uh-huh. the rumor mm. is that Alistair Black was being heavily pushed by Paul Heyman. There was a disagreement between Vince and Paul Heyman. Heyman then gets chucked off of uh, the writing of whatever show it was, or the producing of whatever show it was, and it almost feels like, well, because you are someone that Paul Heyman really wanted to push, we're now going to punish you. And it, it mm. just it just seems, and, you know, obviously with Alistair Black as well, his, his wife got released from the, from the company as well. So it just all feels a little bit, it always feels a little bit petty. Um, yeah. when they do it's like playground stuff, isn't it? Almost. Yeah, yeah. 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 Vince so. is a 146-year-old man. <laughs> With painted on eyebrows and pubes, like we pointed out <laughs> last week or the week before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, sure. you know, what a loss to WWE Alistair Black is going to be. You know, I'm going to bang this drum until it happens. But, you know, he's easily going to go to AEW. Why would you not take a punt on Alistair Black? Yeah. You know, he'll be called yeah. Tommy End or whatever in, you know, you know, what he was before. But why would you not take a punt on him? Why would you not? You know, he could be your next big superstar. Yeah, big time. You know, you know you're know, losing The Undertaker because he's retiring. You've got this young guy who plays a, you know, a dark, satanic-type gimmick. Are you fucking mental? <laughs> yeah, you got to let that go. 
<laughs> well, that was the plan. Wasn't that the plan? Andrade versus oh, yeah. Undertaker. Uh, not Andrade, Alistair sorry, Black. Alistair Black. Alistair Black versus yeah. Undertaker. That yeah, like a pa- could, could it be like a passing of the torch type thing? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. But now yeah. we're getting Alistair Black versus Thin Air because he can't fucking wrestle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nah. I think I, I said it a few weeks ago, didn't I? On the on the pod, there was a, a match a few a few weeks back. I can't remember if it was a pay per view or, or or SmackDown maybe, and it was a like a ten man tag or an eight man tag or something. And the talent in the ring was ridiculous, and they mm-hmm. were all and they were all kind of just on the fringes. Ricochet, Nakamura. Alistair Black, I don't even think Alistair Black was there. You know, the, uh, Alistair Black the, hasn't been on TV since October last year, apparently. Bloody yeah, hell. Crazy. Crazy. Since he was drafted but, since he was drafted to SmackDown. So whenever the draft was, he when he was since he was drafted to SmackDown, um, he hasn't been yeah. seen on TV since. It was about yeah. October time, yeah. What a what a waste. What a waste. What? Andrade, I'm assuming he's he's fit and ready to go. Charlotte's yeah. pitched ideas for him, you know, backstage for them to do some sort of uh, gimmick together. You know, that would even freshen Charlotte up. It would give her something different. Yes. But yeah. instead, right. we're going to get that same fucking thing with Charlotte, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's just going on and on and on. The same thing again and again. Got a challenge for the title. She's going to do this. You know, it's the same thing every year. Yeah. What? I don't understand why she's so scared of change. They turn over ridiculous profits no matter what fucking bilge they put out every year. Yeah. Yeah. What at this point in his life, why does Vince care so much? You know, to you know, why why does he why is he so hell bent on you know putting out his product? Has he not seen how yeah. successful and you know, you know, applauded and critically acclaimed NXT is? Yeah. Is he that fucking ignorant that he thinks that wrestling fans don't want to see that? It's because it wasn't his idea. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Mad. it it's so. ridiculously brain dead. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, he should stop putting that shit blonde dye in his hair because it's <laughs> clearly rotting his brain. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, a John Lawn is just coming back. In some form. Oh god, yeah. Right, yes. yeah. It's a fucking yes. boys' club. Like the, yeah. it's like the main roster of WWE is a complete boys' club of like his, you know head, Vince and his mates. Uh, what was he head of talent relations again? Which was like his original role. Yeah, you share that. <laughs> so you got to do it, but now he's come back. Shut the shit, no doubt. Mm. This Good is stuff. why. This is why I'm losing so much interest in watching it every week because. Yeah. It's shit. Uh, it's it's just not uh, good, is it? Yeah, I thought about I thought about this earlier, and I thought to myself, if I wasn't involved in this podcast, would I watch this? I am involved in this podcast, and I still don't watch it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, one of one of us has got to do it so that we can have a podcast. (laughs) I mean, I'm just it was you know you know what I'm trying to say though. Yeah, I know I know exactly what you're trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's, yeah. I do watch it. It's kind of for the you know. I wake up on Tuesday morning. I sit down, have breakfast, turn on, turn on more. But it's just, it's just like habit at this point, you know. It's mm. it's like comfort food, I guess. You know, mm. what's it? What was on there? It doesn't matter if it's good or shit. It's just you know, it's there every week. It's something yeah. to watch. Full we'll blast doing my half now. I watch <laughs> AEW and I enjoy it. Yeah, I watch NXT yeah, and I enjoy time, it. Yeah. But I I can't. I just cannot enjoy the main roster because there's no direction there. There was a few weeks where SmackDown was brilliant. Hmm. And now once yeah. again. You know, it's it's lost direction, and we're in the build-up to the biggest show of the year. And you know, like you've just mentioned, the the biggest show of the year doesn't even have a fucking card yet. And usually, we know who's wrestling who at this point. Yeah, yeah. at the least stories the, haven't even played out. The main event, and if, yeah. And, it, and if fast lane is becoming the issue, like if it's we can't do our mania plans because we have fast lane, get rid of it. Get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> the have, have nothing. <laughs> have nothing between. The Royal Rumble and Mania, just pure yeah. build for that. Show. Or just have the Elimination Chamber, but have it spread out a little bit more. Course, Don't have it yeah. three weeks after yeah. the Royal Rumble. You know, you have yeah. you have a have a pay per view in January, have the Elimination Chamber at the right at the back end of February, and then build yeah. to WrestleMania. Because yes. you you know you got you've got Fast Lane next next Sunday, so a week tomorrow, yeah. right? And yeah. you know. Then after that, we've got what two, three week build to WrestleMania. 
Yeah, pretty three much. weeks. Three weeks. You, you cannot build for your biggest show of the year in three weeks. You're literally throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Same pretty much. Sticks, yeah. yeah. Like the plan yeah. is to have 45,000 people per night at WrestleMania. God knows what they're going to be watching at the minute because you, you would assume that um, the nights will be planned out. So the main event for night one is going to be this. The main event for night two is going to be that. Yeah. Yeah. At the minute, yeah, awesome. why would you want to buy... Yeah, I know it's WrestleMania, and I know it's live wrestling. We've not been able to do it for in forever. What? That's fine. But you don't even know what you're buying tickets for at the minute. Yeah. No. I mean, I'm, I'm always willing to let storylines story lines play out and, and various things like that. So when people get their ass in their hand because such and such is being given a, an advantage again or the storyline seems rubbish, let it play out because it might turn out to be good. But at the minute... Four weeks out, nothing, nothing is getting me excited about WrestleMania. Four weeks time off. It time off is getting me excited about WrestleMania. I have, I have time yeah, off for yeah, WrestleMania yeah. every year, and I'm more excited yeah, for so. that than I am for actually for actual WrestleMania at the minute because they're yeah. just giving you no reason to. You know, there, there is no championship in WWE that has any sort of direction at the minute. Maybe the IC title, but you would imagine that it's going to be Big E versus Apollo at Fastlane and not at WrestleMania. Yeah. So yeah. you've got three weeks to book a whole, you know, a whole two shows worth, two nights worth of wrestling. Yeah. I'd see like a rematch, but that'd be really shit, wouldn't it? A multi-band, maybe? Yeah. Who even knows? The thing is, right, WrestleMania used to be so great. Well, it is great. I love WrestleMania weekend. I love it. Yeah, but... Yeah. You know, you used to have the Money in the Bank pay, uh, ladder match at WrestleMania. Mm. Now it's oh. a whole pay-per-view because, you know, they, they can't help themselves. Yeah. They just cannot help themselves. You know, wh when you had the Money in the Bank match at, you know, at WrestleMania, it was something to really look forward to. Mm. But then everybody had to have a Money in the Bank ladder match. The, everyone, the tag teams, the fucking, everyone. Just, you know, everyone has to have Money in the Bank. Yeah. You can't just be, what, you know, everyone has to have an elimination chamber. Mm. Every, it loses how special it is. Yeah, these yeah. things lose, lose lose that specialness. Yeah, like an Legend Chamber should be once every few years, like a big like end of a feud maybe. Yeah, because you know um, it's coming. Oh, the Elimination yeah. Chamber's coming up. I wonder what the match is going to be. Yeah, Hell in a Cell's coming up. I wonder what's going to be there. Yeah, exactly. It's stupid. You, you you save these things for a special occasion. You save them for the big stages. Not saying the Elimination Chamber should be at WrestleMania, but you understand what I'm trying to get. I at. get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Like, yeah. get rid of Money in the Bank pay-per-view and have King of the Ring. Yeah. Have yeah. have Money in the Bank at WrestleMania, <laughs> like it used to be. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Sorry. I have... <laughs> Went off a tangent, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's just so shit at the minute. Someone, Steve. Yeah. Someone's, wound, someone's wound him up and he's gone. It's fine. Because <laughs> everything you've said is absolutely spot on. And Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk a bit more about, obviously, WWE programming in a set. But I'm going to start with uh, AEW Revolution, and then I'll go on to Dynamite straight afterwards, because that makes logical sense. So yeah. Revolution, uh, a long-ass pay-per-view. Um, so I'll, I'll whiz through the sort of the, the results and the, the, the main talking points, which I think we all know what they are. So the books defeat Jericho and MJF. Um, Good match. We know, obviously, now... With, with what happened on Dynamite, that there is something coming with Jericho and MJF. Um, mm -hmm. Pac and Phoenix, or Death Triangle, is that what they're, they're known as? That's, um, that's their yep. faction, yeah. Yep, yep. That's their faction, yeah. So they win the uh, tag team battle royal or casino battle royal buy-in, cash out, whatever it's called. <laughs> um, so they're now the number one contenders for the tag titles. Excellent. Two fantastic wrestlers there. Good. Winning that. Um, Sheeda wins to retain her title. Uh, reports good. kind of said that the ma match was probably a bit too long, but a good match. Yeah, um, the first one I saw a, a, a Sheeda match, and yeah, I'm very impressed, and I like it a lot. Mm. You never saw a Sheeda yes. match before? No, no, I've heard about. It. I know mm, you know, good. you go through know, clips, clips of matches, but first time watching like a full match, I was like, oh, she's awesome. Oh yeah, she's my favorite man. She's awesome. She's so yeah. good. So good. Yeah, she is good. Watch AEW, really Finn. Good. Quit fucking around. 
<laughs> I'm trying. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I watch most of it. Hard. Just don't watch Raw. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, Miro and Kip Sabian beat uh, Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. Um, mm-hmm. I'm hoping that Miro gets a bit of a push soon. I really, really do. Yeah. Um, he needs it. I think. Yeah, he's gone from doing shit about... wedding gimmicks in WWE to shit wedding gimmicks in AEW. Exactly, awesome. exactly. There's yeah. all that, that that initial promo about the uh, you know reaching for the brass ring, but there's a there's a ceiling there and all that. Uh, um, huh. <laughs> uh, Adam Page beats uh, Matt Hardy um, again. Big so Matt, Matt, Matt Hardy uh, loses his first quarter earnings to Adam Page. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, Scorpio Sky wins the ladder match. Is now the number one contender for the TNT title and grabs a literal brass ring that is hanging up on the ladder. Now I'm no, pretty certain it was, it was a rubber ring. You know, like when you go swimming and well, you can't swim, so you have to have a rubber ring. I love the Sonic ring. Like, was, like, like, yeah, I thought, yeah, that's what it looked like to me. It looked like a Sonic ring. <laughs> um, good. Yeah. So good, good was... noise. <laughs> <laughs> um, the. Um, the mystery entrant was as predicted by Mr. Garner, Ethan, Ethan Page. Is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. It all yeah. ego, Ethan Page. Hell of a talent. That's the, that's the guy. Yeah. So um, I, I read a couple of things saying that a ladder match was probably the wrong time to introduce him. It probably didn't show off his true skill set. But we'll see. No, He's probably not. Time. But, you know, it's like when, you know, the Ricochet's debut in NXT was in a ladder match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, Ricochet yeah. in a ladder match makes way more sense than Ethan Page yeah. does in yeah. a ladder match. But, you know, it's a good way to introduce him in, and, you know, he'll be um, a ridiculously valuable asset for AEW. Yes, yes, 100%. I'm um, glad he didn't go WWE. I'm so glad he didn't go WWE. And I yeah. usually, you know, I want to see the guys that I like go to WWE. But at the minute, man, fuck that place. <laughs> and, and, yeah. I'm, <laughs> and I'm glad as well that, I guess in a way that, AEW haven't changed his name. So obviously you've got Adam Page, Ethan Page, not related, I guess. But, but I'm just guessing there. But um, if it was WWE, WWE, they'd definitely be brothers. Oh, they'd, be, <laughs> yeah. they'd either be brothers or they'd have completely uh, changed the name. It'd be like Ethan, one hundred percent, just be Ethan, Ethan or something Brock. like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the the mystery signing that was teased by Paul White and then massively, massively picked up by. Tony Khan was as predicted by you guys, Christian Cage. Yeah. You're signing? Yeah. Yeah. I have no issues with Christian at all. I mean, you know, you see the like the tweets from the AEW guys, full of praise for Christian, you know, saying how much is, you know, they, they praised his mind and how much having his mind, you know, as an asset backstage is, you know, is, is going to be a big deal for AEW. I like Christian yeah. anyway. He's in great shape. He can offer an awful yes. lot. Um, his age doesn't bother me. Chris Jericho's 86, and everyone <laughs> still absolutely loves him. So, um, you know, yes. age yeah. really isn't a factor if you're keeping yourself in shape. Batista was yeah. the young animal forever when he was in Evolution, and he was <laughs> 102 years old. <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, he's he's clocking. He's almost at two hundred now, and he's in Guardians of the Galaxy, and everyone loves him. So, <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it's you know, age really isn't. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Sting, for fuck's sake. Yeah, Sting has didn't literally have. been around like when before wrestling was on TV. Yeah, didn't uh, DDP like make his debut in his thirties, mid thirties, something yeah. like that? He's yeah. thirty-seven. Yeah. DDP when he made his debut as a wrestler. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. I've got, I've got two years. Get in. Um, <laughs> you can do uh, it. Can do yeah, I could do it. I'm knocking on that door now, to be honest. I'm fucked. I can't, I can't <laughs> even walk up the stairs without being knackered. I've got no chance. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I can't even go to bed without uh, having a bad back or anything. So wrestling is well out of the question. <laughs> it's got the yeah. dude. <laughs> you are. Get me it's got the ring. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. If I got honestly, if I use the ring fit that we've got, I'd probably keel over and die. There'd be no more pockets. <laughs> Not with me, at least. <laughs> I think when I first started, like my legs just didn't work. Like I wake up in the morning, my legs are on fire. Like ah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get down. Hmm. You're an athlete. I am. I'm probably an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big pop of Um. <laughs> 
Darby Allen and Sting beat uh, Cage and Stark in a. It was a cinematic match in a street fight. Um, seen little bits perfect of it. Way really well thing, shot. Yeah, and perfect way to use him. Yeah. Uh, the live comms was a little bit strange though over a cinematic match. It almost felt like a bit, bit like a watch along. Um, so yeah, that was a bit, bit weird. But hey ho, here's what it is. No um, comms are better, I think, for a cinematic match, especially cinematic, one like that. I agree. I mean, yeah. look at the Boneyard match. It was perfect. No commentary. Just let it play yeah, out. Great. And it was lud- it was ludicrous and great. But yeah, yeah. this was fine. You know what? Uh, this is the perfect way to use Sting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. And then we come on to our main event of the night, which is Kenny Omega versus John Moxley in an exploding barbed wire death thing match. Ropes are on fire. I don't know. Um, a death match, basically. Exploding barbed mm-hmm. wire death match. Um, good match. Both guys putting their bodies on the line. You know, really good visuals. The explosions were really cool. And, the, the, you know, the, the moves that they were doing and everything. One thing I want to point out, obviously, that the, uh, nobody is, nobody's kicked out of the uh, one-winged angel. And the way that they got um. around it this time was uh, John Moxley. Uh, he kicked the rope, which caused an explosion. Uh, so Kenny Omega had to kind of break the pin. So Love technically, it. technically, no one's uh, still not kicked out of that. Um, Question: Do then, you guys know? Which, sorry, do you, know, do you guys know which game the one ring, one ring danger is from? Or why it's called that? FIFA fourteen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. Deadly premonition. Uh, no, it's <laughs> not yes, but uh, no, it's uh, Final Fantasy seven. It's, uh, oh, is it? Is uh, yeah, Sakura, ah. basically. Yeah. Kenny Omega so, is a nerd, though, isn't he? Like us. He'd love this podcast. He would, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, as well. Let's try and get him on. Out the best, you know, heard yeah, that. sure. I'll, I'll, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll drop him a message on Twitter for him to not reply to. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be cool. I'd love that. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's a bit of Kenny, if you hear this, which you obviously will do, everyone steals our Ooh. shit anyway. Call to Holly, listen to their stuff. Our jokes are there. You yeah. know, you listen to yeah. other podcasts. Again, our jokes are there. So, you know, our podcast is low key. You know, being listened to by people with more status than us, and they're stealing our <laughs> yeah. shit because we're funny and they're not. Yeah, screw you, Bichi. They're coming for you. a grass physical let's do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's invasive. Let's make games um, of grass part of Cultaholic, but none of them are doing it. Just us. Yeah, just us. <laughs> yeah, sack them all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Only joking. So it's one of the very few. Uh, it's one of the very few. <laughs> right. uh, it's one of the, the very few uh, wrestling uh, YouTube channels that I actually uh, like and enjoy, as, as yeah. well as our own, of course. Um, anyway, uh, we've not talked about the main thing of the uh, of the night. So Kenny Omega does win uh, the help from the Good Brothers, and as part of this, the, the the ring is set to explode after 30 minutes. So it was a 30 minute time limit match. Um, and then there's a this is a standard down. thing in exploding barbed wire death matches, standard, by the way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So 20 seconds to go. Uh, the Good Brothers handcuff uh, John Moxley, beat him down a bit more. He can't obviously move. Um, they run off. Eddie Kingston comes out, wants to save his his friend of, of many years covers him to try and be, you know, the hero. And what we get is basically um, two sparklers that you get on uh, on bonfire night. And that was it. And it was, um, it was a real shame. It was a massive botch. And it's, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's it overshadowed what was a, what was a good match, actually. Um, yeah. It, it's been high, highly, t- look, no one was expecting a Michael Bay style ring explosion at Daly's place. But um that was it was it was some, something went wrong. I'm not, I'm not gonna sh- shit on it too much. Something clearly went wrong. Uh there was like I said to you guys there was more fireworks and more explosions for Cody and Brandy's gender reveal uh, a few weeks yeah. back. So um, yeah. AEW have done their best to try and play it off and, and work mm-hmm. it into storylines and uh, and various things like that. But uh, yeah, a real shame. A little bit embarrassing for AEW, but they'll recover go. from it. 
Yeah. Of course they would. Yeah, they'll yeah, recover from it. They've addressed it. They've took the piss out of it. You know what? It happened. Yeah, it's yeah. a real shame it happened because, you know, you don't, you don't want to see that. You just don't want to see... You don't want to see these things happen. Yeah. Apparently, going to do Tony Khan, um, they had practiced it beforehand. They had like a bomb, which they used at like, you know, the test, which worked perfectly. Um, bought the same bomb again uh, for this match, and it just it was a dud. It just didn't go off. Um, yeah. oh, you you so, can't plan for that. You just can't. Exactly. It's, yeah. It's not our fault. It just happens. And that and that's the uh, that's the risks of uh, live TV, isn't it? You know, these things can yeah. happen. Um, you know, but there we go. They will uh, live and learn from it, I'm sure. And move yeah, I mean, the quickly. talent involved did everything they could to to cover it up the best that they could. And you can't really ask for much more than that. Um, you know, Eddie Kingston was obviously going out there to sell a big explosion. You yes. know, yeah. so he went out there and did his job. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Guys. Oh, of course. oh, they eat. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, Excalibur had to sell that. Uh, you know the you know the explosion. <laughs> yeah, we had to try and sell it, and it's just it's just so difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. It's a real shame. Um, but you know what? They've 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 worked it into. Uh, I mean, they worked it into Dynamite. I'll come on to that very very, very shortly. Um, they worked it into Dynamite, and actually, it came out with an incredible uh, line from Kenny Omega, which I'll talk about in a sec. So, um, yeah. Um, Moving on to Dynamite, we had uh, Phoenix beating Matt Jackson in a singles match, so that will kind of begin get the ball rolling for obviously that feud between um, Phoenix and, and Pack against the Young Bucks for the title. Yeah, they'll be the ones um, to take the titles, I think. Yes, I think so as well. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I think they'll win that. Um, bit of a strange interview with Sting uh, and Tony Schiavone at the top of the ramp, interrupted by Lance Archer. It was a little bit all over the place, and it just kind of ended a bit strange um go on, sorry. Yeah, we're gonna get sting versus lance archer i think aren't we it looks like it it looks like it but it was a bit of a weird promo in fact sting looked a bit pissed off to be honest <laughs> and just yeah i mean I, I didn't really think much to what lance archer had to say it didn't really make any no, sense no, and it was weird. maybe if you, you know maybe if you can't cut a promo let the master of promos who's standing right behind you do it yeah exactly mm -hmm. yes yeah 100 percent um but the main sort of talking point from uh dynamite so uh kenny omega interrupts what was supposed to be christian cage's introduction to dynamite uh flanked by callus and the good brothers um and they reference the explosion not heard around the world uh mm -hmm. they make out that um that moxley and kingston are the ones that should be embarrassed and not not kenny omega or anyone else um they then, um, Eddie Kingston then comes down and they start to mock him and they make out that the ring's going to explode again. They're going to go, no, quick, it's going to explode, it's going to explode. And Kenny Omega, I, I rewound it to make sure this is what he said. He <laughs> says, 69 me, Don, quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> as, as clear as day over the mic, 69 me, Don, because he wants Don, Don <laughs> to, to cover him the same as Eddie Kingston kind of covered John Moxley in the uh, yeah. uh, Revolution. Yeah, brilliant. What a line! What a line! That's going to be a, a soundbite for the future, Finn. Um, it definitely needs to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John Moxley then comes down after after that shenanigans and uh, starts to they start to brawl. Christian Cage then comes down and Mega wants to shake hands with him. Uh, he goes to attack um, Christian. Uh, he reads it, goes to do the finisher on him, but he is pulled out of the ring by Don Callis. So, and then Christian holds up Christian Cage, holds up the uh, AW World Title. So, mm. is Christian being pushed already into that picture? It looks like it. Maybe uh, the way I, you know, it's a bit of a side note here before we obviously move on to to WWE. Now. Uh, I think it's tonight the Impact show where the where they unifying the titles. Oh well, yeah, okay. where they the unifying the TNA uh, World Title and the Impact Heavyweight Championship. So it's Rich Swan versus Moose, and the winner of that match then goes Oops. on to face Kenny Omega in a title for title match. So oh. you, you would imagine that Kenny Omega is going to hold both titles. That would be okay. interesting. Uh, yep. Christian has obviously been part of TNA before, uh, part of Impact yeah. before. I always call him TNA. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. so if they're going to have Christian win a championship, maybe he wins the Impact title and does some work for them 
as well. I don't know. Maybe I'm just I'm spitballing there completely, but I don't I don't know. I find the entrance team he uses in AEW is the same one he used in TNA. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, no, the instant classic Christian Cage. By the way, I love that name. I love it. Yeah, me too. And I love Christian. I think it's great. Yeah, super. Um, Scorpio Sky versus Darby Allen uh, for the title. So you know they didn't mess around that title shot with the Scorpio Sky. Uh, Hands in his rubber ring. Was, <laughs> yeah, handed in, handed in his uh, his Sonic ring, and uh, yeah, decent match. Uh, a really cool moment where um, Darby Allen did a dope piece of a cedar, and Scorpio reversed it into a cutter. You fucking the mark, really <laughs> fucking. Well, I'm you just, absolute what? mark. What do you what do you want me to call it? A dive? Oh, he dived out the ring. Come on, dope sure. see You like me on comms? Dope yeah. cedar. I've I've learned from the biggest mark on this podcast. So. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, <Finn. laughs> I remember back in the days when it was just a suicide dive. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good fact, Mara Ronello for that. Um, yeah. He's the reason we're all marked. He's the reason I'm a mark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Great. Oh, for sure. Yeah. He is great. Did you see that he was the just a bit of a side note there? People were saying that he was going to be the big sign in. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, and then and then when Tony Khan said no, no, he's going to be wrestling. They're like, ah, oh, it can't be him. So no. <laughs> yeah, that one went away. But some people were going, oh, maybe it's maybe it's comms. Maybe we're being a bit of a throwing a curveball. But I'd love to see him good. back on comms in in some fashion at somewhere. He's awesome. Yeah, I don't I don't think it'd be yeah. AEW. I think Excalibur does a great job uh, as a play by yeah, play guy. I think he's really really good. Um, it, the weak link there is JR. I still you know I still stand by that. Mm. Um, it's a shame. You know, I think Tony Schiavone is excellent. I really do. Great storyteller. And I think Excalibur is just a, a, a wonderful play-by-play guy. But um, Moro, you know, probably not the place for him. He needs to be on a, a big no. stage doing big stuff. He's so good. He is. Yeah. Anything he does, because he does boxing, doesn't he, and MMA and all yeah. sorts of stuff. So, yeah, he's cool. really good. Uh, uh, Darby Allen wins. Um, so, yeah. He retains. And then uh, the Inner Circle end the night. Uh, they all go to the ring. Jericho announces that the Inner Circle needs freshening up uh, and that they will need, they, they probably need a new member. MGF disagrees, says that they actually need to let someone go. And then Sammy Guevara returns. And then what we see is Sammy Guevara sets up uh, a camera in the, in the Inner Circle's dressing room, which reveals that MGF was trying to get Ortiz, Santana, and Hager to turn on Jericho. Um, MJF says, yeah, okay, you've, you've rumbled me. Now go and get him. The three of them step forward, and then they turn, and actually, you know, Jericho reveals, look, you, you think you, you must be stupid. We obviously talk to each other. But in a kind of double twist, um, MJF reveals that he's been secretly setting up his own faction, which turns out to be FD, FTR, Wardlow, and Sean Spears. And they surround the inner circle and beat the shit out of them, basically. Yeah, that's going to be a great feud. I'm really, really excited yeah. for this. It's going to be really good. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Very cool. It should be uh, should be really good. Looking yeah. forward to that. So, yeah, that was uh, that was AW. Not a bad show. And, uh, you know, a good way to follow up on Revolution. Um. Right. I skim through this shit. Monday <laughs> Night Raw. So, um, <laughs> one really cool part: Bobby Lashley has got an insanely good intro now. Yeah, a real throw, real throwback to the old days of where you had a video on the Titan Tron of the wrestler doing moves and all that sort of thing. Really, remember really those cool. days? Love to, I love to see it. Rather <laughs> than the, rather than the word art of just saying Bobby Lashley, you actually had, you actually had, uh, you know. Edited videos of him you know, strangling people and stuff. Really cool. Uh, he had a match against The Miz, uh, a rematch for the title. He retained. Good. Miz can now move on and have that Bad Bunny feud for WrestleMania, maybe. Um, yeah, definitely. Drew McIntyre and Sheamus have uh, had a really good, another really good match. No DQ match, but it kind of the referee called the match. Bit of a weird ending on that one. Um, to drag it out, Steve. Come on, you know the you know the rules here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, I've I've written down here that whilst it was another good match, this feud needs to end. There needs to be a conclusion to this feud pretty soon. Um, it'll be a fast, it'll be a fast lane, won't it? 
Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that one. <laughs> uh, the only reason I'm mentioning this is because, again, the way the guy's name was announced just made me laugh. So Riddle versus Slapjack. But it was Slapjack. Yeah. Slapjack. Just, AKA thought, Pie Man. Um, Pie Man, yeah. I thought it was actually what? a pretty decent match. Probably Slapjack's best match since, uh, you know, existing. Yeah, but... but Am I so? Am I right in saying that before the match they advertised that it would be Riddle versus Mustafa Ali for the title next week? So basically, they've given away the result of the upcoming match. I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure that's what they did. Yeah, well, that's deep. <laughs> I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Um, yeah. So yeah, we all knew what was going to happen there. Um, throughout the night, we had a couple of things with Shane and Braun Strowman. Really weird. Shane cut the weirdest promo I have ever seen. Um, so weird. Or sweating buckets. All, all yeah. over the place. It was bloody awful. To the point where uh, I've read actually this week that people have raised genuine concerns about Shane McMahon's health because they're like, <laughs> what's... This guy's usually like pretty good on the mic. He's not, you know, he's he's pretty good, pretty solid. He was all over the place. He's, it, it was... Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, worried about getting released. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Um, Let me go and talk to Ron. <laughs> uh, I mean, apparently, it wasn't the... it was on, intentional. Um, yeah, I think I guess just dragging out time. Like, three hours, okay. We'll just take as long as possible to get this out. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a weird way to kind of get heat. I guess strange. Yeah, uh, and then we had our one of three mandatory appearances from Nia Jax and Shane <laughs> Baszler this week. Um, and then we finished the night on Raw with AJ versus Randy Orton. Uh, you know what you're going to get from these two, uh, two great wrestlers. And mm. Alexa Bliss appears on the screen, distracts Randy Orton. Um, and then three of the ring posts have fire coming out of them, which, it, which uh, has been reported as a deliberate rib at AEW, so uh, fair play. AEW do it enough to WWE, so uh, yeah. yeah, fair play to WWE there. Uh, but just don't do it again because now the joke is dead. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, AJ basically wins from the distraction. Randy Orton has been eating blackjack sweets again. The the ball dribbled out of his mouth. Obviously, he's <laughs> had tried. He's had a hundred of them instead of having the twenty p limit from a tuck shop again. And um, yeah, and then Alexa Bliss <laughs> appears back on the screen, laughing at Randy Orton as Raw goes off the air. Raw was pretty crap. Um... <laughs> AJ Styles is awesome, by the way. It just seems like he wins every week. Yeah, yeah, and, and and again, you know, going back to what we said earlier about WrestleMania plans, like there's no indication that he's got a match at Mania. Now, no, so you know, it's not. Certain guys shouldn't have automatic matches at WrestleMania, but it's AJ Styles for God's sake. You know, before we yeah, you can't and... main event Raw and then not have a match at WrestleMania. Oh, exactly. So yeah, we'll we'll wait and see on that one. Um, quickly moving on to NXT. So the big announcement from uh, William Regal is that Takeover will be two nights WrestleMania week. So night one will be on the Wednesday, which is a normal NXT night. And then night two will be on the Thursday, and it is called Takeover, Stand and Deliver. And I'm not going to sing. No. Stand and Deliver. And Deliver. Thank you. Aww. Well done. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, a, a, yeah. A two night take. A two night takeover. <laughs> Why? <That's> interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's. Oh, There's you know, so it's, much wrestling that week. It's absolutely right. ridiculous. Yeah. Right. So we so have, got Raw we have, on Monday. Yeah. Yep. Hall of Fame on Tuesday. I would imagine so. We'll yeah, but no, that's what it is. It's announced. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I missed that. Right. NXT TakeOver, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. SmackDown Friday, WrestleMania Saturday, WrestleMania Sunday, Raw Monday. And then NXT is rumoured to be moving to Tuesday, which will be the Tuesday after WrestleMania. So yeah. that is <laughs> eight <laughs> consecutive <laughs> days of WWE. Oh, wow. And you've not yeah. even factored in AEW and Impact and all the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 um, oh, you think is, is it too much, much Finn? Just, just a tab. Just a little, it's bit, a little bit much. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> I mean, that just, Who the just fuck's going to want to listen to this after all that? <laughs> so I'm wrestling now. You know what, guys? Have, have a week off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't need uh, don't need other idiots telling them all about what's happened when they've probably watched it themselves. Mm. Um, but um, I mean that that uh, that move to Tuesday for NXT isn't guaranteed just yet. Something's happened with that, so it might be staying on a Wednesday. But still, even if it's seven nights, seven nights of con- consecutive wrestling, that's a hell of a lot. A hell consecutive of a lot. WWE, not just WWE as well. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's true. I mean that's ludicrous. Yeah. This is absolutely mental. It really is. Yeah. Plus, then and you've I'm... got you know AEW's combined sixty-eight matches a week on across two dark shows. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, you know, yeah. they announced the elevation stuff, and it doesn't look any different to dark to me. I mean, I'm not yeah. sure what anyone else thinks yeah. here, but what what has elevation got that no, no, normal no, no. AEW dark doesn't have? I, I just don't get it. The big show. I'm no. oh, sorry, Paul White. Hmm. <laughs> Apart from that, yeah, yeah, okay, but it just doesn't make any sense. Like they've announced, you know, I think there's sort of, you know, I think there's 34 matches on um, AW Dark Elevation, Jesus. probably less, but <laughs> it feels like that. And then there'll be yeah. another four-hour AW Dark. Yeah, it's mad. Yes, obviously it's like you, you don't need to watch it to get the story stuff, but I don't know who's you, watching. What you go from one extreme. You're going from one extreme to the other, aren't you? You're getting 11, 12 matches on Dark if you want to watch it and all the other stuff. And then mm. SmackDown this week had three, four matches. Yeah. You know, you're from one extreme to the other. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to sort of uh, NXT. Um, the other announcement was uh, women's tag titles, which mm-hmm. when you saw the women's division all stood at the top of the ramp, there's loads of them. So I can understand yeah. why they've done this. The, yeah, with yeah. all them new new signings and stuff, there like, there is loads of them. Um, yeah, and it, so, it also makes the main roster look so stupid. It really does. It really <laughs> it does. does. Yeah, um, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez uh, are made the uh, inaugural champs of that due to the injustice of the uh, the Nia Jackson Shayna Baszler match and the fact that they won the Dusty Classic. Um, but they are immediately challenged by uh, Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart, and that match happens later on in the night. Uh, women's title match: Io Shirai versus Tony Storm. I, I thought this was a pretty poor match, considering the caliber of talent in the ring. Uh, far from a classic, uh, Io Shirai wins and retains the title. Real shame because these are two excellent wrestlers. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe, maybe someone has a different opinion on. That match, um, Shotzi and Ember Moon then beat Dakota Kai and Gonzalez to become the new NXT Tag Team Champs um, on. on the same night. Um, yeah, I, I, I get I think it. This has happened. Yeah, I, I I think this has happened to um, so that we can have uh, Raquel Gonzalez versus Io Shirai going forward. I think yeah, that's why. Well, that makes yeah, perfect sense. Happened. Yeah, and then because uh, Raquel Gonzalez, uh, she's had an amazing few months. I think she's come on leaps and bounds, and um, yeah, I mean, Io Shirai, the, as, as it stands right now, seems unbeatable. So I would guess uh, yeah. Raquel Gonzalez taking on Io Shirai at uh, one of the takeover nights and winning the title. Yes, really, really? Mm. I think she'll win it. Yeah, wow. I think so as well. Yeah, interesting. I keep hoping that. You know, which we're thinking to go Kai and Gonzalez will go to the main roster, the Nigel Jack and Stain. But that it's not going to happen now, probably. I think that ship is well and truly sailed now. I think yeah. It's the same. same. Yeah. Same. Because that would make yes. sense. And we really never do things that make sense. No, no. Mm. <laughs> no, no, they don't. <laughs> um, and then we end the night with um, Adam Cole versus Finn Balor. Okay. Great match. Back. Back and forth as expected. Um, Bala takes advantage of uh, Adam Cole being put off by the arrival of Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, Bala picks up the win. Kyle O'Reilly gets in the ring. Adam Cole is begging for forgiveness. Goes to low blow. Kyle O'Reilly blocks it um, and then just beats the shit out of him. Um, and yeah. while that is going on, Finn Bala is standing in the middle of the ring and then... He says, uh, what took you so long? Turns around and Karrion Cross is just staring into the back of his head. So 
there mm. is your storylines going forward. In my opinion, Adam Cole versus Kyle, mm-hmm. Kyle O'Reilly and Finn Balor versus Karrion Cross, And I am all for yeah. it. Yeah, me too. Kyle O'Reilly coming, uh, you know, entering the Capital Wrestling Center. Looks like he's about to go for day one at download before he gets yeah. uh, all mucked up. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's going to be great. Uh, I fully expect Adam Cole to be promoted to the main roster uh, after WrestleMania. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. Um, a quick side note as well for NXT. Um, Pete Dunne said he was the best technical wrestler in the world. And mm. who dares come to wrestle him? Now, I'm praying that it's Daniel Bryan. I was about to say that, yeah. That'd be... Praying. Hello. That'd be because so that, cool. that is the dream I've, I've match that I need. I've, I've literally yeah. just got goose, goosebumps at you saying that. <laughs> because it's it's obvious That's that obvious. Pete bases is you know game on Daniel Bryan to a degree. You know they do a lot of, a lot of similar stuff in terms of you know, like when uh, the whip into the crazy. Irish uh, into the corner with a backflip and all that sort of stuff. Um, isn't his, so, um, his, ring, his ring attire is a homage to Daniel yes. Bryan as well, isn't it? Yeah, the the so. the. Yeah, the burgundy oh. ring gear. So um, I would love Pete Dunne versus Daniel Bryan at TakeOver. Yeah, and the Daniel Bryan on Talking Smack recently was saying how he's the best technical wrestler in the world. So, you know, it's, I'm I here like for it. it. 100, I'm, yeah. I am here all day for oh, it. If that That is match of WrestleMania week if that happens. Yeah, absolutely. Mate, that, that, could, that could main event WrestleMania for me. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. yeah, same. Yeah, it'll be better than... <laughs> I'm watching after that. I say, oh, I've done it. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. A couple of little yeah. things. Um, quite worth mentioning. Jordan Devlin's coming back. And no doubt have a match with uh, Santos mm. Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship. Because they're both yeah. champions right now. Um, and Imperium would still try to recruit uh, Timothy, Thatcher, Timothy Thatcher. To Imperium. Thatcher, yeah. 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 Yep. That will happen, I think. Mm. Yeah. I, I think that will happen. And that's going to be great. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah really good. I think Imperium are on NXT next week, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, good stuff. Um, moving very quickly on to uh, SmackDown. Um, awful segment where Reginald was trying on suits with Nia Jax. She was smacking him on the arse and flirting with him. Get the fuck off my telly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, was it right? A couple minutes late. Okay, um, no. Just skip. skip. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, we we talk about Nia Jax and Shayna being on telly like fifteen times a week. Reginald's not far off either. Um, <laughs> it's a real shame because obviously Reginald is is he's cool. He does all these flips and, and shit, and he's you know he's a charismatic character and all of that. And they've done just done what they usually do with things like that and ran that character into the ground. And now people are sick to death of it already. Yeah. And that's just, it was a great novelty that time he fought Sasha Banks, but you know, after that, he's just everywhere and and, and can't be doing with it. Um, This week in what did Seth Rollins wear? He had a nice green (laughs) and blue tartan suit on uh, black roll neck jumper, really showing off his uh, fine lean physique, Uh, a black (laughs) wanker. A a black wanking glove on the right hand, uh, and the going for the no socks and shoes look looked fantastic. Uh, Lovely stuff there from uh, Seth Rollins. He ended up interrupting the Cesaro and uh, Buddy Murphy match, and then um, strangely enough, when Seth then went backstage, Nakamura was there and had a bit of a stare off. So, hmm. not sure what's going to go on there. Um, we then thing. had, uh, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, look at the potential. Cesaro and Seth Rollins. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, making jokes, obviously, about Rollins and, and all of that there. But Rollins and Cesaro. Now that, that, that has to be match. a feature every week. Now, what Seth Rollins wearing? It's, it's, yeah, absolutely. yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's I'll like, make a thing for um, it. I'll make a. You know, like we have got the week in wrestling highs and lows there on the video version. I'll make a what is Seth Rollins wearing one. We need to get like a little yeah. jingle for it as well. Little jingle, <laughs> kind of like. Um, like some like elevator music, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Doo, 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 you know. Yeah, that'd be great. This week, yeah, Seth yeah. Rollins is wearing a uh, a white wanking glove. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, we get had, make sure uh, we get that for next week. No, yeah, you got it. Oh, sure. yeah, elevator music, got it. No, no, look, <laughs> Seth won't be on. Uh, he won't be on SmackDown next week. Oh, he'll be there. Uh, um, <laughs> okay, of course he will. Uh, the Kevin Owens show, what a waste of Kevin Owens, uh, with Bianca Belair and uh, yeah. Sasha Banks. 
big thumbs down from me. I can't be doing with segments like this. I've already said that in the past. And it doesn't, it hasn't progressed anything uh, in terms of that storyline. We know where it's headed. Here's, They've got a here's your build. At Fast Lane. Well, here's, here's your build. Bianca Bello won the Royal Rumble. Build over. There you go. She challenges the champion. That's it. Yeah. But now they've, they've got to have a, they've got to have a tag match first against nine. Just know. rinse repeat crap in it. It's like, yeah, Bianca Belair wins the Roaring Ball, says, I want to fight you for your belt because I have the right to do so. Storyline over, do something else until WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh but straight after that, Belair and Banks have a match against Tamina and No Pants Natty. Um and uh <laughs> Jackson Baszler were ringside because, of course, we need to see yeah. them at least contractually obliged. Yep. Week. Yeah, mm. contractually obliged. Um, whatever. Passionate promo from Big E calling out Apollo Crews. Uh, he then has a match against uh, Sami Zayn, but throughout the match, he's calling out Apollo Crews still. Like, where are you still? And then uh, Big Apollo comes out and uh, just <laughs> attacks Big E. And uh, yeah, uh, that's. We know where that's going to go, and uh, this in I see run of Big E. It's not been fantastic, but I do hope Apollo Cruz wins and wins that title soon. Well, um, he's definitely getting the bigger, the bigger push in the minute. He's changing, yeah, 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 of change of character. Yeah, you know, I was we were critical of it last week. Um, we didn't even mention that he had a spear. You know, that just made oh, yeah. things even worse. But you know, there was a lot of praise for it. Maybe it's us that's toned down. Really not was. WWE. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe there was a lot of. Uh, there was a lot of fire emojis and uh, thumbs up and stuff in the in the comment section. So people, I, I still it. think it. I still think it's a little bit dicey, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. true, true. Well, I like Apollo as go. a performer. Yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm, I, I I like Apollo as a wrestler. I think he's great. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes I don't know. There's. A, I said it last week. There's a line. You know, mm. it's just debatable Hello. whether it's been crossed or not. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um. And then we finish the night with uh, Reigns and Daniel Bryan doing a contract sign. So the first time we've seen Roman Reigns on SmackDown all night, um, mm-hmm. which surprises because you usually see him about five times as well. Uh, yeah, he usually gets the 8K time. entrance at the beginning. Yeah, 8K entrance takes 30 minutes, two ad breaks. Mm-hmm. Um, he says he's not feeling the match, doesn't really want it. And then Daniel Bryan just signs it straight away, starts winding Roman Reigns up. Uh Daniel Bryan then into insults Jimmy and or Jay, um, and Jay says that he he wants to be the special enforcer for the championship match at Fastlane. To yeah, which, seems fair. Yeah, yeah, seems fair. The, the match needs to be called down the line for his words because yeah, that seems really fair. Um, Edge <laughs> then comes out and says, "Actually, I tell you what, I'll have a match against you next week, Jay, and the winner becomes the special enforcer." For that match at Fast Lane, that match engine, that match engine a draw, and both of them are at Fast Lane. Yeah, maybe, maybe, probably. Yeah, good shout. Um, a brawl ensues, but um, it it finishes with Daniel Bryan actually doing the uh, the running knee on Edge, leaving Edge lying on the mat as SmackDown goes off the air. So. Mm. I still think we're no clearer to knowing what the main event, the SmackDown main event is for WrestleMania. I know we've been saying, oh, it'd be Edge and Edge and Reigns. I'm still not convinced. Yeah. The, the, long, the more it goes on, the more you're looking at a multi-man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is... Uh, hmm, we'll see. But yeah, that was... Uh, I, I know we spoke for probably about an hour there about wrestling, and we said it was a bit of a bit of an underwhelming week. But um, yeah, there we were. That was your week in wrestling. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, a thing with it needs to pick up. I mean, it's needed to pick up for a while, but you know, now that you now that we're sort of less, we're well, we're four weeks out from the big the biggest show of the year, and we've still got a pay per view in between, and the fact that we just don't know what's going to happen between now and then is all right. Who knows? Anything can happen. You know, all, all sorts happen. of nonsense really... can go on. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, yeah. There we go. Does anybody else have anything they would like to add? Uh, not really. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
it's fine. NXT and <laughs> AEW the of the week at the UDR, but even they weren't spectacular this week. No, no, they weren't. So, yeah, bit of a bit of a pants week. Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. Right, next week, could the eliminator be decided? <laughs> Finn needs one more point mm. to uh, beat Steve and become the winner of the first ever series of the eliminator. We will also have fast lane predictions. All of that and so much more. But thank you very much for listening. This has been episode 135 of the Games and Graps podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts across all podcast services everywhere. 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 And youtube.com forward slash games graps and facebook.com forward slash games and graps. Yes. All right. My name is Sunny G and I have been with Finn Steele. Goodbye. And Steve. See you later. And we will indeed see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Fuck you, Vince. Shit. <laughs> <laughs>